Welcome back to Gun and Shot TV. This is Chris, and today I went to an auction. Now, I go to quite a few gun auctions. Usually I don't buy much, um, but if something goes for 50 bucks or whatever, even if it's a project gun, I'll take it with just because, you know, 50 bucks is really not that much um, when you figure, you know, it's a project and something to do. So they had this one, and I didn't look too close at it because I wasn't, you know, specifically looking for a Remington 581. And interestingly, they put that it was a single shot when it's clearly a magazine-fed rifle. The only thing I know that's wrong with it is it's missing the magazine. It's missing the rear sight, which looks like it might be a pain in the ass to get a new one. Uh, and then the wood is kind of, like, gross. I don't know if it got wet or what. Like, it doesn't look all beat up, but it just looks dull. So I don't know if the finish is still under there or the finish is off from getting wet or what. I'm going to see what I can do to clean that up. And then it's got some rust and uh, some stuff on the barrel and the action that I'll have to clean up. But I figured I would show what I'm going to do to go through and clean this gun up. And then, you know, give you some ideas on if you find something like this in Grandpa's attic or whatever. And you want to get it cleaned up so you can use it. Usually with guns like this, they're, they're going to work fine. Uh, a lot of times on 22s you'll find bad extractors or broken firing pins. This one seems to, everything seems to work fine as far as that goes. So it's just going to be finding some parts and cleaning it up. So first step, make sure it's unloaded. Sometimes old 22s are loaded, usually at an auction. They know what they're doing. To get the bolt out, you push forward on the safety and pull, and it comes right out. And you can see, so there's some some old, uh, looks like maybe uh, old brass jacket material, or maybe some old copper grease, and some corrosion in there. The bolt itself doesn't look too terrible. Um, like I said, the, the stock is just rashed. Um, I'm going to take the stock off, and then we can deal with the action and the barrel and the stock separately, rather than trying to work with the whole thing at once. Probably save some time and some effort to do them separate. So you're going to want a gunsmith screwdriver set that is hollow ground and you're going to want to pull these screws. Now I don't actually know how to take this apart so I'm just going to guess and try pulling stuff until it comes apart or I need to look it up. But I'm going to bet there's a wood screw here, wood screw back here, And there's a small screw in the middle, and I don't know if that does anything. It looks like it does hold this plate on. And these are <laughs> these are just wood screws into the stock, so there's not, not that much support there. Especially for something like this, where these screws are going to be very expensive if I lose them. I'm going to go get my magnetic parts caddy to put, to put this stuff in so I don't lose anything that's super important. So here's my magnetic parts caddy. You can get one at any Harbor Freight. They give them away half the time. Uh, here is trigger guard and plate for the bottom of the action. Here is, looks like the action screw, and then yet another wood screw, and then this should all just kind of fall out. It might be a little tight from sitting for 50 years. Um, so the one thing I did notice is this actually does have a pretty nice bolt. Uh, if you look like, that's actually, there's, there's uh, double sets of three locking lugs on this bolt to lock it. So that's, I mean, that's pretty extreme for a bolt action. You'd never see that anymore um, for a bolt action 22. Like that's, that's pretty crazy. So now that we have the stock off, we got two options. We can deal with the stock first. I'm going to try and deal with my rust issue first. Now the action itself is not terribly, terribly bad. Um, you can see where you got your safety and the release. This is the release to pull the bolt out. So when I'm pushing it forward, it's pulling that down. Um, and then it's just a simple 
black. So pretty basic. I don't think I really need to take the trigger part. The trigger seems clean and it looks like it's an aluminum black or, or something. Yeah, it looks like aluminum to me. So I'm not going to have to worry about that. I'll probably just douche some oil in there. This is the magazine release, but not terribly rusted. But the first thing I'm going to do is get this rust off. So to do that, I'm going to get some steel wool and I'm going to just use some gun oil or you can use WD-40, whichever you have handy. So I'm going to try and get this rust off. I like to just use oil, uh, gun oil, WD-40, gasoline, whatever you want to use, something thin. It's not really to provide lubrication so much as to wash the flakes of rust off. Once they come off the metal, you want them to be washed off and not just stay on and get ground back into the surface. And this is going to have some pits left no matter how good of a job I do. Um, it is rusted to that point. Now it could be something that I end up taking the time and try like rust bluing or a refinish project on. This would be a good candidate because I can't really screw it up. It's already screwed up. But the pits aren't bad. Like they could easily be polished out if I was going to refinish it. So that might be something that I do pursue at some point. If the gun, if I can get all the parts and everything and the gun works well and is reasonably accurate, the barrel's not shot out or anything. Um, that, that probably will be what I'll do with it. But for right now, I just want to get it cleaned up and get that active rust off it. You can see there's a bunch of rust on my hand from wiping it like that. So that's all rust that we got off. So even like, even now, it looks a whole bunch better than it did sitting on the rack all covered in that surface rust like that. You know, if you're going to sell a gun, a lot of these gun auctions are just people at private parties that take their guns in and, you know, get them auctioned. If you're going to sell a gun like this, take five minutes and wipe that rust off so it doesn't look so shitty. I mean, this looks a million times better, and I literally just spent two seconds buffing it. Like, this is just simple stuff. And as long as you use quad aught steel wool and oil, it's not going to hurt anything. You know, in, in some areas you may see shiny no finish underneath, but that's because the rust already ate the finish. There's nothing you're going to do to prevent that. And getting all that surface rust off is going to be better than leaving it as it was. So, zooming in a little bit. So now I'm just going to get all that surface rust I can off the action. The action is actually not as bad as the barrel, which is pretty typical. Because usually the, the barrel is what gets dropped in the mud or gets dirty while you're out using the gun. And the action itself is shielded by the stock, so only, you know, only so much moisture is going to get to it. Most people end up douching uh, some extra oil on the action. And so usually the actions are, are much nicer than... The barrel and this is no no exception to that and you can see just a quick a quick wipe and it already looks way better than it did you know and, and it's not just older guns that look like this the 7722 I I've Shot quite a bit. I mean, I got that at a gun shop, and it looked like this, and that's part why I got it so cheap, but, you know, a few minutes of cleaning it up, and it looks like a million bucks now. It's still got some pitting on the barrel, um, just from how it was used. I'm just going to do some oil on the action components, just to get some oil in there, because I'm sure there's old crud in there. I don't know if I'll take this trigger apart. It seems to function okay. So I don't know that it's worth the effort to take it apart to clean it because on a bolt action like this, there's no carbon or fouling that's going to get back there. The big thing your issue is going to be is old dried up grease in there. So as long as they oiled it and, you know, the oil didn't stagnate too bad, just flush and fresh oil should be good enough because all your debris from firing is going to be up here. So there's really not going to be much in the trigger. You'll have some crap in, in, in the 
spot where the bolt goes and stuff because all that crud comes back and forth on the bolt, but really not too bad. Um, probably also put a little oil down the barrel just to get some lubrication going down there. Um, but really, two minutes with steel wool, and we've already got the blue wing looking a million times better than it did. Let me turn my attention to the bolt. The bolt actually looks reasonably decent, but same thing. I'm just going to hit it with some steel wool. and get all that loose rust off. So you can see like this this thing was just like a matte finish almost and now that that rust has gone there's still some you know, some wear areas, and there's going to be some little pitting from where the rust was, but by and large, most of it's just wiped right off. So it's 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 really neat to clean something like this up. Now, to compare and contrast, this is, you know, how the gun looked as it was at the auction, you know, with all that surface rust and filth, and you can see how different the bluing looks with just a little bit of oil and elbow grease. And there's also, like, on the inside of these, you'll see this. This is, like, some old rust and pitting. Um, just because few people take these apart, and most of that will buff right off. And when you do clean your gun, always, you know, look for stuff like that where it's it's not exposed, so it doesn't get oiled or cleaned. Um, and make sure that you clean it, make sure you take care of any rust that's there, and, you know, oil it before you put it all back together. But this thing's cleaning up beautifully. Like, that's that's the neat thing about these older 22s. Um, you know, now 22s are the cheapest, junkiest thing. But, like, back in the 50s, even a junk, cheap boys 22 would still be a nicely finished gun. Yeah, they cut some corners here and there, but, you know, guns used to be, you know, even a cheap gun would still be pretty well overbuilt. I mean, there was always, you know, guns that were absolute shit and were made just to hit a price point, but... You know, people like, companies like Remington, I mean, Remington used to make some really, really crazy high-quality stuff. Um, I can't remember, I think it was Remington that used to make the 40X target rifles. Like, we're talking, those those 22 rifles were crazy. So, and even this one with the crazy overbuilt lugs, I mean, you're just never going to see that on a new production 22 unless you're buying, you know, a biathlon or a target rifle or something like that, where it's it's... It's crazy expensive, but so here we have a couple seconds of buffing, and now our trigger and action are cleaned up. I still have my screw here. This isn't super important, but I'm just going to buff the head and get a little oil on it and get a little oil on the shaft. Um, same deal with my wood screws. Just going to buff the head, make sure any loose rust is gone and then get a little oil on it okay so this is as good as the action is going to get from just a real quick cleaning now over time I'll probably buff this that way two or three more times just to try and clean it up and get it as clean as possible because that oil is going to get underneath and lift up the loose rust and so by doing that you know it's going to get better and obviously I'm going to have to clean do like a regular cleaning of the barrel and stuff, but that's a little beyond what I'm going to do scope, and I'd rather just do a 22 cleaning video to cover how to clean your barrel uh, with a normal modern gun versus something like this where it's a project, because I'm sure that cleaning this is, I'm going to be pulling wads of crap out of this barrel just because I'm sure it's got, got some issues and old lead and garbage in it, so it'll be a pain to get cleaned. So we move on to the stock. Now... The stock actually has some really kind of neat wood to it, but it's got this like crud all over it. I don't know what that is. And we've got a couple options. Uh, first thing I'm going to do is I'm just going to try using some scratch cover um, and see if I can like get this wood wet and wipe that off and see if there's still finish under it. Um, you know, you can use something like... Um, 
steel wool or bronze wool and try and buff that off. But looking at it, it actually doesn't look that bad once I got some scratch cover on it. Like, I don't know if I'll actually waste the time refinishing this because if I can keep um, buffing it and it keeps cleaning up this well, you know, it's going to be perfectly fine. It doesn't, like, and it, it, it kind of feels rough is the biggest thing, which might be the only reason I would consider buffing it. Um, but I think it's just crap on top of the finish. So if I keep rubbing scratch and dent cover type stuff on it and get it cleaned up, I think that it will look perfect and all that crap will rub right off. So, now if you're at a gun auction, and you're looking at two guns, one that looks like this, and one that looks like this, which one are you going to bid on? You know, and this is just a two second thing, I didn't even spend any real time. So, you know, when you see these old guns, A, realize there's a lot of potential there, B, if you're going to sell one, take a couple minutes to clean this shit off, and get it looking presentable, and you'll get double, triple your money out of the gun. Like, you know, this one... It's really not a bad gun. It just needs a little bit of TLC, a little bit of cleaning. So I'm going to probably speed this up a little bit and just wipe this down because I'm sure it's kind of boring watching me just do the same thing over and over. So from what I can tell, that uh, that weird scaly stuff is just built up on top to finish um, from like water damage or something. So it's it's coming off easy enough with just rubbing it with paper towel that I think I can just buff it off with my steel wool. So that's just what I'm going to do is just gently buff it. And it seems to just be lifting it off. Now the steel wool is going to be more aggressive than a paper towel, obviously. So it should speed it up. But as long as I don't put a lot of pressure, it shouldn't damage the existing finish. But it should get all that loose crud off that's making the existing finish so dull. You can see on my steel wool, all that crud. It was either flakes, old finish, or dust, or mold, or something. I don't know. But it's coming off, and the wood underneath looks just fine. And feels really smooth and nice. Like, this is actually a really beautiful stock. You know, it's the kind of wood that you just don't see on cheaper guns anymore. Um, just because... It was much high quality wood back in the day, so they would put something like this on a cheap rifle because it was, you know, it was cheap wood at the time. But now, like getting something this nice is going to be pretty hard. Most stuff comes with just absolute shit wood to meet a price point, and you know, some stuff's so shitty that it's almost like you're better off going with the plastic. So I'm going to actually switch to the old English and try and buff some shit back into the wood. So I've now buffed it pretty well. Uh, I'm going to wipe off all that excess scratch cover.
and there is some crap in this channel. Now that doesn't show, but you might want to get some scratch cover stuff in there just to moisturize the wood a little bit. And the cleaner you get this, the less likely you're going to get rust on the bottom of your barrel. So, you know, maybe even if you want, clean this with a little bit of gun oil so there's oil in the wood versus, uh, and don't go with a shitload because it will sometimes seep through, but, if, you know, just wipe it out with a little bit of oil and a rag. But I'm just buffing off all that excess scratch and dent cover. And this thing turned out way better than I thought it would. What I was picturing was I'm going to have to buff it, like, with some coarse steel wool or some sandpaper and then, you know, get all the crap off and then go in with something like a Danish oil or something to kind of refinish it half-ass style. But this actually looks really good now, so I don't even think I'm going to go through that much effort because um, this thing looks a million times better. And, you know, this is another case of, like I said, I, I think it was just dirty, you know, it was the big thing. It was super dirty, and now we got all that stuff off. And there's, you know, there's a couple, couple, you know, dings. Um, if you were anal, you could steam those out if you wanted to. Like, you can do a whole lot of stuff to clean up an old wood stock. But in this case, I mean, this is just a kind of a beater cheap project gun, so I'm not going to kill myself on it. But it's really neat to see how good these old quality woods will clean up if, you know, if you take the time and you know what you're doing. You know, but this looks a million times better. So that's always nice to see. Sometimes you buy something like that at an auction, and uh, it does not turn out the way you hoped. So it's always nice to win one. Okay, so I've got this actually really, really cleaned up compared to what we started with. And I think it looks a million times better. Um, the big deal you do want to make sure, make sure you don't have any chunks of steel wool that wiped off anywhere. Um, it can, can rust if it gets left somewhere. If you're using brass wool or bronze wool or whatever, it's not going to be as big of an issue. Um, because those don't rust, that's why they use them for working on boats. But, um, we're at the point where it's all pretty cleaned up. I think everything looks way, way better. So I'm just going to put this back together and just gently wipe down, make sure there's nothing, nothing stuck to it, no steel wool or anything. Okay. And then... Once again, to get it back together, we're going to push the safety forward. And there we go. So this is the gun all back together, all cleaned up. It looks a million times better than it did. I mean, and and there is a much, you know, much more involved process of actually going through and refinishing everything and, and doing it, quote unquote, the right way. But for, you know, 10, 20 minutes, however long this took to go through, like this thing looks so much better. I'm still going to have to track down the front sight here, or the rear sight, pardon, and a magazine. But those are pretty minor issues. Um, I'm sure uh, I'll find find one somewhere. I'll, I'll probably make a video too because this isn't the first gun I bought without a rear sight and had to track down the parts for. So it's something I'm getting kind of good at is tracking down these parts. So I'm going to make a video where I explain how to... Uh, 
find parts that you need and how to you know find the really hard to find rare ones because some of these old guns like this I have a feeling there's a bunch of parts floating around for but some of the rarer guns they're harder to find but for Gun and Shot TV this is Chris I hope you liked uh, watching this hope you learned a little bit something about cleaning up some of these old uh, barn find quality guns uh, and have a great day